Code guarding is a helpful technique that we can use in our code to help tidy up and improve the readability. Here I have an example that validates a password that doesn't use the technique code guarding. So let's have a look and see how we can change it and help the readability of our code. So you can see just in the main, we have create a password. We're telling the user it's going to be length is greater than or equal to eight. We enter the password, enter the password again, and run it through this function, and then just print out whether it's valid or invalid. So this is an artificial example just to demonstrate what we're going to do in this function. So basically just asking the user to enter the password, re-enter it, and then we're just checking if they're the same. So inside the function, we have this. And as you can see, there's all these different if blocks, and we finally just get to return true. And then every single time we pass false on one of these if statements, we want to tell the user what the issue is and then return false because we don't want it to validate the password because they're not going to be true. So our first check is just an empty check. It's going to make sure that both of the string values, which is string pass and string pass confirm, have values inside them. And if they don't, we return passwords cannot be empty. If this one passes, then we check if both lengths are greater than or equal to eight. And if not, we can say password length needs to be eight or more characters. And if that one passes, then we can check they're equal to the same. And if they are, then we can use return true. Alternatively here, we can use the equals function, which is dot equals, and then we can just use password confirm. And that works as well. So let's have a look. Essentially, we want to try and break down each of these if statements into one or two lines, and then we can just return true at the end. And that's the whole point of code guarding. You want to get rid of all the negative values at the top, and then by the time you reach the end of the function, you're just going to simply type return true and you don't need to make it any more complicated than that. So let's start with the first if statement. We can copy this and just place it at the top. And we can just add our curly brackets after that. So we need to change the condition slightly to make sure it's going to pass the way we want it to. So as of right now, this is going to pass true if the value is correct, but we want it to pass true if the value is incorrect. So right here, we're checking if it's not empty on both the pass and the pass confirm. So we simply just want to remove the exclamation points to remove the not. So this now reads, if pass is equal to empty and pass confirm is equal to empty, then we want to do the bit of code inside here. And the bit of code inside here is going to be whatever's in the else of this if statement. So if we follow this curly brace down, we get to this console write line and return false. So we can simply copy that and drop that inside here. And that's the first one done. So now we can grab the second one. And now this condition checks if they're greater than or equal to eight on both of them. So now what we want to do in order to make this pass true. So we actually want to do less than eight because if it's less than eight, it's going to be the opposite of greater than or equal to eight. So we can change both of these and again, follow the same pattern. We can grab this bit of code and paste it straight inside here. So now these two paths are done. So we can grab the final one and then we can just change it slightly. Because right now it says if pass is equal to pass confirm, whereas you want to make it not equal to. So all we need to do inside here is just put the not operator in there. And there we go. So let's comment out this big block of code at the bottom. And just let's see what we've done. So if pass is empty, or if pass confirm is empty, then we return this message, return false. And the same thing with all these paths. Less than eight, less than eight, return the message, return false. Check if they're not equal to each other, return the message, and then return false. So all of these conditions, they're going to be our negative conditions. So after we pass all negative conditions, if it reaches this bit of code at the end, we can simply just do a return true. So let's try to run the code now and see if we can trigger all of these different paths. So let's start with the first one on its own. So we can simply just press enter twice, and it says passwords cannot be empty. So this one is working. So using one and one, it's going to pass over this check because they're not indeed empty, but then it's going to fail on this one because it needs to be eight or more characters. So, so far, so good. And this one's going to be if they're going to be equal to each other. So we need to make them eight characters. So we can just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we can mess it up on this one and just insert seven twice. So they're not equal to each other, but they're still eight characters long. So now if we press enter, it says passwords are not equal to each other. So right now, these two are passing false, and this one's passing true, which is why we're getting this message. So it looks like all of our checks are working correctly, so let's enter the same password in twice. And there you go, it says valid, and we don't have any console write lines when it's positive, because that's all we need to do, we don't need to tell the user anything. So let's just have a little bit of a recap. 
So as you can see, there's too many if branches inside here, so it's always good to be able to pull them out. The structure of this code is we want each of these if statements to pass true in order to reach the final return true. And we break it down into separate if statements so we can have an else on them and we can use the console write line to tell the user exactly what's going on and what's the issue. We can put all the conditions on one line and just return back true, but then we won't get the breakdown of all the different steps that the user needs to pass. So it's always good to be able to break them down like this, but as you gain more paths and more checks, then it's going to get even more complicated. Let's say you wanted to check if it had symbols, if it had full stops, if it had capital letters, if it had lowercase letters, then you'd be up to like six or seven branches and it would look really long. So that's why we use the code guarding technique. We try and get rid of all the negative paths at the start and then simply just do return true. So now if you wanted to add additional conditions, you would simply just have another one of these blocks. And as you can see, it looks a lot neater. You just have each of the blocks that process everything. And then once you hit the end, you just have return true. And in this case, you're going to keep duplicating this if statement. It's going to keep getting bigger and bigger across the page. Let me show you, for example. If you take this code and just duplicate it. And if I keep doing this inside here. Then you can see it's getting a lot more intense. We have so many different layers to it and it's getting harder and harder to read. And you've got to imagine that each of these is going to have an else as well. So if we were to copy and paste this, you can see that the code is starting to look incredibly messy and super long. It does look a little bit neat with the indentation, but it's also really hard to follow on the screen. So it's best if we just use the code guarding technique. So just to recap what we've done here. And let's remove these extra options that we put in. So this is our entire validate password function, and it's quite neat. So what you need to do with the code guarding technique is you need to do the opposite logic. You want this if statement to pass true, but what you're checking is for negative values. So in here, we're checking if it's not empty, whereas in here, we want to check if it is empty. And the same thing with this, if the length is greater than eight, if the length is less than eight. So we want to check all the negative values inside here, and then we can finally return true at the end if all the negative values have been passed and none of them are applicable to the parameters that have been passed in. Try to use this for all functions that you write that have a similar approach to this, where you're just returning certain values that are based on certain conditions that need to meet some sort of validation. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments and I'll get back to you soon. If you're interested, I have a C Sharp Ultimate Udemy course linked down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.